Hello my soccer universe, last review video for the past weekend or in this case two weekends and we're going back to the Iberian Peninsula where as you can see from the title I think the biggest story at the moment is that these are trying times for Barcelona and they are sitting top of the table because Real Madrid dropped uh, a point but it seems like that some of the performances are really papering over the cracks and Barcelona have overall been overperforming uh, from what has, uh, from what they should have gotten. I mean, arguably, um, Celta Vigo should have gotten something there. They lost to Inter Milan. They have a huge match coming up this Wednesday, uh, and then next weekend is the Clásico. So I think this not only are the results papering over the cracks; it's also a really a fateful week for Barca come, come, coming up, uh, and that takes definitely center stage. Uh, in in a way, however, um, it is many of the kind of smaller teams. The no, smaller teams, you know, in Spain, there's Real Madrid, there's Barcelona, and then there are some uh, mid teams and smaller teams. But um, on those mid teams, Real Sociedad getting also two pretty big results, uh, statistically really doing well. However, when you again look at the performances, maybe a little bit more uh, than you would expect. Also, Real Madrid have everything, uh, have been everything but convincing. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, it's kind of a weird times. Similar story almost in Portugal, where uh, Benfica still find themselves top, but they have dropped points with the other two winning. Um, and it is Braga that are kind of falling a little bit by the wayside now, although they had a really good start to the season. And I actually want to start in Portugal with the results that were just coming back from the international break, where uh, Porto... A big form of win over Braga, and again, as I, as I just said, Braga had a really good start to that season. You could think that they might crack into the top three and you know make it a top four. And yeah, Porto said, "No, nope, you're not ready yet." And of course, this is in a way a derby. Uh, it took a little bit, but then within two minutes, Evan Nielsen and Eustachio uh, make it two 0 and then Pepe scores two goals, one for the opposition, uh, one. Uh, for um, uh, his team, Galleno makes it in stoppage time, a 4-1 uh, win. Sporting also getting back to winning ways with um, a 3-1 win over Gilles Vicente. And then it's with uh, Vittorio de Guimaraes that hold Benfica, although I think um, we we'll little we have to take this rather a little bit of salt because uh, Benfica were preparing, of course, for the big clash against PSG uh, in the midweek, and the same thing goes now. So uh, hold the horses in, um, in slamming Benfica for that, and Vittorio de Guimaraes is traditionally also a big side. Uh, then on the past weekend, again, all the big teams winning, and Braga losing at home to Chavez. But, you know, we're sporting 2-1 over Santa Clara, Benfica, a uh, big 4-2 uh, win over Rio Ave. I think the goal, uh, the score is a little bit closer than it should uh, have been. They take the lead, they score the last goal, but Benfica score four in between. So uh, pretty much going one way was 3-1 at the half. And Porto win 2-0 at Porto, Porto um, uh, result that I want to point out is the 1-0 win of uh, Guimaraes at uh, Passos, where uh, they take an early lead uh, through Luz in the 8th minute. Then go a man down, two yellow cards for uh, Fonseca Maro. So in the second half, uh, Passos play with, with a man advantage, uh, cannot get, get the goal. What's even worse is the 89th and 93rd, they get uh, also yellow red. So uh, three red cards there. And so we have the standings that now Porto overtake Braga. Uh, Sporting also move, moving up, but uh, it seems to be finally poised for a Benfica-Porto duel uh, at the early stage of the season because uh, Sporting already had a few uh, losses. If, and uh, the expect saying say as much and you know Braga is now falling away they were close to Sporting Sporting is a, a relative safe third uh, spot and since we say Benfica Porto Duel we have next weekend a cup round which I will not cover yet um, but we have to we come then back uh, in two weeks with the big Porto Benfica clash which actually means that we probably in two weeks time uh, within the next two weeks are probably two 
two reviews i will talk about that in a sec so but that's the big one that will tell us a lot can benfica distance themselves from porto or can porto really make it a proper title race again i think this will be an absolute huge match and this has always been an ugly match i'm so looking forward to it uh to all uh the emotions that will for sure flare up high I also give you just in case the next uh, round as well where it's not uh, so many big games there. But you know, Porto Benfica, pretty big game, I gotta say. Moving over to Spain and now this is from the past weekend. Um, a team that has been making steady headlines, an athletic club that uh, sit also very high in the table. They get a 4 nil over Almeria. Um, and are they the team? I don't think yet. Uh, you know, before the season we said, okay, Sevilla will probably struggle. Uh, which team will um, go into this fourth place? Villarreal was one. Um, Athletic Club could be one. We have to see. But uh, Villarreal seems also unlikely. Because while in the Europa League they play usually a B-team squad, uh, it seems like they don't have a rhythm in La Liga and they're dropping points left and right and again. Uh, nil nil against Cadiz although I think their performances are much better than their results but that can always go in a dangerous spiral Real Valladolid 3 to win at Getafe uh, Sevilla last game for Lopetegui in the league uh, losing at home to Atletico Madrid who actually looked for once really really good uh, Marcos Llorente and Alvaro Morata scoring the two goals um, two thoughts Griezmann and now the, I mean, this was one of the last games potentially where he got in uh, right at the 60th minute. Uh, now it is uh, his contract is sorted, so he can play uh, more games. So uh, that's good news for uh, him, Atletico Madrid, and Barcelona who get uh, money. He takes a huge pay cut. So big kudos to Griezmann there as well. And of course, we also need to talk about Joao Felice, who, with all the talent, he just cannot uh, get a spot in, in his squad because he's more about the moaning uh, than about the really um, trying to earn his, his spot and put in performance, put, put in the grinta that actually uh, Simeone uh, demands from his players. As for Sevilla, it was logical that Lopetegui is going to get the sack. Uh, their performance have been really, really bad. Their team building, uh, yeah, on paper, all nice players, but there is some oomph missing in there. And that, I think, is the big problem for Sevilla that, uh, yes, We'll have to see. Uh, of course, Jorge Sampaoli is the new manager. Uh, Barcelona get a very unglamorous win uh, over Mallorca with a brilliant goal by uh, Lewandowski. Uh, but overall, this Barca team seems flat. And at this point, you could still maybe make the excuse. There is a big game against Intercom coming up. Uh, so that might play into in, it. But Barca are made to suffer. Uh, made to suffer also Espanyol fans with their goalkeeper because they had the lead 2-1 uh, in the 83rd third minute. Then Valencia go down with a red card, but uh, Martin Braithwaite also with a red card. Is there, and then a goalkeeping mistake gives Valencia a 2-2. Celta with a big win over Betis. Betis also not come, come back and uh, getting a very early red card when they were already 1-0 down in the ninth minute. So and then playing the most uh, most of the game with ten men uh, against a Celta team that can hurt anyone uh, is not ideal. Uh, the cracker of the weekend came completely out of nowhere. I mean, uh, a few years ago we said always watch Real Sociedad. They have been kind of stale a little bit, but then out of nowhere a five-three win at Girona, a highly entertaining game. Uh, also the goals. I mean, uh, Cyril give. Um, uh, um, Real Sociedad an early lead. Riquelme Martinez turned around, but Sol is equal as before the half, before Castellanos. 3 to lead for Girona. However, Price Mendes and Zubi Mendy, 66 74 turn around, and Kubo makes it a 5 3 win, secures the win. Absolute madness that game. Uh, Real Madrid drop points for the first time uh, this season. Despite an early Vinicius June Junior goal, uh, they concede a rather odd equalizer uh, in the 50, 50th minute. And then, uh, yes, Osasuna go down to 10, 10 men. Benzema gets a penalty. The penalty is put on the, on, on, on the crossbar. And the goalkeeper for Osasuna has now uh, the last three uh, times that he faced ben Benzema within a year, 
Benzema didn't score. So uh, they definitely played in, in, in India. Then it was also an offside goal for Benzema. It just was one of those days for Real Madrid where, yes, uh, their good streak is now over. And because of goal difference, they even fall behind Barcelona at that point. Uh, going over on the past weekend, uh, again, Atletico Madrid, Correa. Not as talented as Joao Felice, however, he puts the work in. He's a similar player. He scores both goals against G uh, Girona, but it was Jan Oblak who actually had to make quite a few big saves there. Sevilla at least get a point against uh, Athletic Club this time, time around. Uh, early a goal by Oliver Torres, and for a while, uh, Sevilla looked much, much better. But uh, second half, it was all Bilbao, Vesca getting the equalizer, and then they were definitely pushing for a second goal and could well have won that game. So Sevilla is still in trouble, as we'll see, they're already in the relegation zone. Uh, the less said about uh, Real Madrid's 1 0 win over Getafe, the better. Eda Militao getting get a goal, and that was about it. Um, Real Valladolid, it seems like a big point that they get uh, against Real Betis at home. However, again, Real Betis is going down to 10 men in the first half. Pezella this time, this time around. Definitely not a good run for Betis at the moment. Uh, Espanyol with another 2 2, this time a uh, They just don't look right in the way. And the Real Sociedad getting a win over Villarreal. And it has to be said, this was not necessarily a deserved win. Uh, they get a goal through Bryce Mendes. It was not a good, good, good game. But then um, again, Villarreal create chances but cannot get the win over the Lions. Very much the same loss that they had uh, to bet this just before the international break. And Barcelona looked good for about 20 25 minutes, where they actually took the lead through Pedri. Um, but again, Lewandowski uh, did not really show up. Uh, I like, like it already against Inter in the second half. Um, Celta had quite a few chances and a big uh, saves had, had to be uh, needed to be made by Ter Stegen. And everyone is kind of asking them themselves, you know, yes, Barcelona up, up top, but they really did not look good. Is it because you concentrate so much on this one Inter game where everything hinges on and then you have a classical coming? So huge, huge week for Barcelona or is really something missing there? And that will be the very interesting part uh, coming up. So if we uh, look at the current standings, Barca Real Madrid just level on top. Oh, the only goal difference is separating them. So this is exactly what you want to have going into a Clasico and Athletic Club, being best of the rest and then Athletic, uh, Atletico Madrid also uh, rounding out the top top four, but there's Ram uh, Betis and Sociedad in there. Valencia, Osasuna, Villarreal, I think it's kind of the second uh, part and you look all the way down, Sevilla, although I don't think they will get relegated at the moment in a relegation spot, uh, not looking good for uh, them at all, the disappointment of the season for sure. However, if you look at the expected standings, yes, they will not finish in European spots, but at least they will get a top half finish uh, as of now, because, you know, with that squad, you still need to pick up the points. Uh, Real Madrid still very much favored over Barcelona. Makes sense. They are not only higher rated, but they seem to be a more complete squad. And yes, you have the occasional of playing, but you not always look good. But uh, there seems to be something there. Whereas for Barcelona... Um, if they cannot play the Barcelona game, they really seem seem, seem to be in trouble uh, there. And the top three, it's still Villarreal in there, uh, but just barely over Real Sociedad. And I think Villarreal will drop out of it eventually as the season goes on. Although maybe they get the turn turnaround. Uh, we got to see. I'm going to do a review video, of course, as well, because we have a massive match day. Uh, it's not only the Clásico between Real Madrid and Barcelona. We have also Athletic Club against Atletico Madrid. Uh, interestingly, those two teams played away to Sevilla, uh, and now they play each other. So there's kind of a mini league going, going on. That's third against fourth, and will tell us a lot about Athletic Club, I would think. Uh, another intriguing match is, of course, Celta Vigo against the Real Sol Sociedad. So uh, they're all in quick uh, succession, and I'm not necessarily happy, happy about the scheduling there, but you know, uh, that's what well, well, this. Of course, the Classico will take over, and I think almost at the same time we have Manchester City against Liverpool. Fortunately, uh, this is not such a big clash as it used to be last season. So we can all really 
more or less focus on the Real Madrid against Barcelona, uh, which of course I will, and then we will do come back uh, now next week and do a review video on on that, um, and then yeah, probably a week later uh, another one because we have to talk about uh, Porto against Benfica. So exciting times ahead in these two leagues. Please let me know what you think, not only about Barca's current, I don't want to say it, crisis because they're in first spot, but it is. it could be a tipping point of the season for sure. So I uh, want to know uh, your opinion. Also add anything that you uh, think that I have om omitted or needs to be said about La Liga or Liga Portugal. I would be very happy to hear about that. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!